Hello everyone and welcome back to Coding with Tom. Today's video I'm going to go over the use of Svelte with ASP.NET Core 8. I think these two platforms work really well together. Uh, Svelte is one of the newer JavaScript frameworks. Uh, it's a competitor to React and Angular, which are more popular, but Svelte has been gaining in popularity recently. The structure and syntax for Svelte are, I think, more intuitive and they're closer to Blazor. So anyone who comes from a Blazor background or even an ASP.NET Core background, I think will find Svelte to be a little more intuitive. Um, and you can use ASP.NET to host your Svelte pages. And since ASP.NET has great built-in identity management, in my example, I'm gonna show how we can use that in a Svelte project. Now, Visual Studio in .NET 8 comes with two great project templates for Angular and React that use the Vite development web server. Uh, it does not come with a Svelte project template, so what I did is I actually created a React project first, and then in Node.js in the command line, I created a Svelte project, and then I ended up replacing the React components with the Svelte component. Now, this is all on GitHub, so you can just download this and use this as a starting point for your project if you like, um, but it wasn't that hard to do. And I'll show you where the files are that you need to update if you want to do it the way I did it. Let's jump right in and I'll show you a demonstration of what this project is gonna do. So when I start debugging, it loads up two web servers. It loads up the Vite development web server and it also loads up the ASP.NET Core um, API server. And with this, you can see I'm using Swagger so you can see all of the API endpoints that are exposed. And the project by default only exposes this weather forecast but we're going to also expose these identity endpoints and another custom endpoint. Another couple of them, actually. If I go over here to the page, you can see we're not currently logged in. Uh, so it's a, a login page is shown. And if we don't even have an account, I can click register and I will create a test account. and click register. And once I've successfully registered, I can go to login and log in with that newly created account. If I click remember me, that's gonna use a cookie that will persist across web browser closings. So um, I'm not gonna bother with that now. If I hit login, I am now into the main homepage, and on this homepage, I've included a example Svelte weather forecast component, and as well as a logout and another link to the register component. And there's also a counter here. This is part of the Svelte demo. Well, let's close this and take a look at the project structure. So similar to like a Blazor WebAssembly, uh, projects, you have two projects, or even the React or Angular projects. You have um, the server components, which is in the server project, and then you have the client components. Now, the client components in this case are just Svelte. Uh, this is all processed by the Vite web development server to generate the Svelte, uh, Svelte code. And on the server, we have ASP.NET Core. So what I'm going to do first is actually show you what's going on on the server. So on the server, we have, if I go to program.cs, you'll see that I've added some things. I added um, a database, so I added Entity Framework, and I added a application DB context and an application user. So this is a, the user that will be the user that we save our login information. And I didn't add any custom fields to it, but I created an object in the event that I want to add other fields to it later, such as first name, last name, or other information. Now, what we have here under controllers is this weather forecast controller, which was actually part of the uh, demonstration that is part of the React project. When you create a new React with ASP.NET Core project, it's basically just an API that produces random weather data. And this is, it just creates random data and spits it back on a GET request. Now, if we go to program.cs, you'll see that I've added my database context. 
and authorization. Now, identity API endpoints. This is if you'd like if you'd like to have uh, API endpoints for using the identity from your JavaScript client app. These are new endpoints as part of .NET 8 that allow you to make your single page applications, whether they're Svelte or React or Angular, interact with the identity framework. And it's all built for you. Um, down here, I added a couple more. So I added this logout, uh, which is a post. So if you post to slash logout, it'll actually sign out the user. And what that does is it eliminates the cookie that is part of the sign out. Uh, this, is, this uses cookie authentication. You can configure identity to use uh, tokens as well. Uh, they're not JWT tokens, but they are it's a, similar. So if you wish to do it that way, you can. Uh, I just used cookies for this. And I also added a ping auth. This is a API endpoint that the client can connect to at any time to retrieve any information about themselves. You can't get the information really any other way because the cookie that the authentication um, uses, you can't decrypt and see like your user ID from the, you know, in the JavaScript code. But this will let the user retrieve it. Plus it'll, you'll know the current state of your authentication. Because if you, if you hit this URL and it's logged out, you'll get an unauthorized error. So your client JavaScript code in Svelte will be able to tell if the user has been logged, is still logged in or not. So the, one of the first things we're going to do is actually hit that page to see, or that link to see if we are logged in or not. And if we're not logged in, it'll redirect to a login page. So that's what's set up here. So this actual line here, this mapping the identity API, which is coupled with this um, I, at identity endpoints, creates all of those, um, if I start it, I'll show you again, endpoints, which includes register, login, refresh, confirm email, resend confirmation email, forget password, reset password, manage 2FA info, and, uh, and that's it. Log out and ping auth are mine, and weather forecast is part of the application itself. Now, I already noticed something in weather forecast I want to fix. I want to make sure that you can only access that when you are authorized. So one thing you do on the controller, simply put an authorized tag uh, attribute up here, and then that will mark this controller as requiring authorization. Now the page only shows if you're authorized, but we have to make sure that the API call only works when you're authorized as well. So if I go back up here, I can show you what's going on in the client. There's a few files I want to call your attention to. Um, first, this viteconfig.ts. This, if when I created my React project, had React specific settings in it, and I had to change them to Svelte. So I had to import the Svelte plugin. And down here, I had to, um, when I define my config, my plugins are Svelte. Now, one thing about Vite, if you don't know how Vite works, is it's a web host um, for the Svelte code. So what it'll do is it'll actually take this uh, Svelte kind of source code here in TypeScript and compile it down to the small Svelte JavaScript file. That's what's actually going to be loaded into the browser. And it has hot reload, and it does all the things that uh, you would expect to be able to do while development. I won't go over Vite too much here, but it's pretty good. Now, the problem is when you're hosting these pages, though, it's going to get hosted on its own port that's different than the port that the API is on. And if you want your page to connect back to your API on the same page that it's hosted, you need to allow those endpoints to be passed through the Vite web server to the ASP.NET server. So that's where Vite comes in and creates these proxies. So what you do is you say, like, I want anything that goes to slash weather forecast to pass through my Vite to myself on this port 7174, which is the port for the ASP.NET Core server. 
and it'll just pass it right through. So for all of the endpoints that we use, in this case, weather forecast, register, login, log out, and ping off, I pass them right back through to the ASP.NET Core. So they appear to be hosted by the same web server. But this is just for development anyway, so this, this works fine. When you publish in reality, your, um, your static generated JavaScript file could be hosted by the same exact ASP.NET Core pro uh, application without any trouble. And that's what this project actually does when you publish it. So that's what's happening in the config. I had to just tweak this a little bit to use Svelte instead of React. Now this TS config, uh, I didn't change much here, um, except I had to exclude the Svelte routing module I used because it's not in TypeScript and it was complaining. Um, and getting a lot of type errors. Uh, I use this uh, Svelte routing module, which is uh, an additional module. To, routing is not built into Svelte by default, so you have to use that plugin. Uh, the index page is a simple page that has a link to the, the TS file, which this will get replaced with the generated um, JavaScript file that Vite creates when you deploy. Now, the actual application, though, is lives in this SRC folder. So everything in this source folder is your Svelte code. Uh, we have a app.svelte, and this is sort of the beginning of your application. Uh, you have, and this is a little bit different than um, Blazor, and I, I, I bring this up. It doesn't have to be, but the, the code is typically on the top and the HTML is typically on the bottom, whereas Blazor it's flipped, but you know, that's neither here nor there. It's a similar concept. You say that, you know, where this would have been a code bracket in Blazor, you just have a, a TypeScript script language tag. And here we import the different things that we use. We use this routing library, but I also use these four components that are part of the application. And this router component is the Svelte routing component, which I have a home component, which is shows the weather forecast and all that. I have a path for logging in. If you go to slash login, you'll end up at the login component. If you go to slash register, you'll end up at the register component. Uh, then I created this authorized view. This is a custom component that handles um, wrapping a page or another component in Svelte with the logic to check to see if you're authenticated or not. If you're authenticated, it will show the page. If you're not authenticated, it will redirect to the login. So let me show you how that works. Let me go over here. I'll show you it actually in use first before I show you how it's implemented. So let me go to my pages and components. So if I go to the home page, You'll see, again, I have my code on the top and my um, HTML on the bottom here. The authorized view tag I put um, on around the entire page. So this will run my authorized view code. If the user is logged in, it will show what's inside the tag. If they're not logged in, it'll redirect them to the login page. So what do we have here? We have some simple HTML with a link to my logout component, which is another component I'll show you that I created. And then there's a link component, which is built in. This is just for the part of the routing routine. So if you want to link to the register page, you just use a link. Um, and then I show the counter and the weather forecast components. And there's some CSS here at the bottom. If I look at login, this is the login page. So this is where it kind of looks a little bit like um, Blazor. Um, I'm going to keep making that comparison, but it just stuck out to me how it kind of looks like it. Um, so basically, we have the code up here and the HTML at the bottom. But at the bottom, we have a, a form that takes you know, your username uh, or your email and password, has a checkbox. And you can bind the value of the checkbox to this variable. Um, you can put the message in here. This is sort of like in Blazor, if you just had a curly brace and an at sign, you know, then for message, it would put it in. And then on click, it handles, it calls the handle register method. So, and this is for registering. 
submitting the form does a different one. It does um, the submit form method. And those methods are just up here. So we have handle register, which simply redirects to the registration page. And then the submit form link, what it will do is retrieve the email and password. It will attack onto the end of it, this use cookies equals true, or use session cookies equals true. Uh, the use cookies um, means it will stay logged in even if you close the browser. Use session cookies will terminate at the end of the session when you close the browser. And that's just a uh, query parameter to the slash login uh, API call to the ASP.NET core backend. So we do a post and with the JSON version of our data, wait for the response. And if it's okay, then um, we go home. We change our, we reload the whole page. Window.location.href does reload the entire page. So it'll reload the page at the index location, which will load the home page, which will th now know it's logged in and show the weather forecast and the counter. So this is how login works. Register is pretty similar, um, except it has some form validation. And if you're interested in seeing how the form validation in Svelte works, you can just look through this code. But in submit form, it does a similar thing. It posts the submitted data to the register API in ASP.NET Core. And if you get a success message, it puts that. Otherwise, it'll tell you there's an error. And then down below, here's all the HTML that goes with it. Now let's take a look at the components. I have those in the components folder. The counters, this is real simple. This is kind of the hello world for Svelte, um, which uh, again looks you know pretty similar to Blazor. We have the code, the HTML up here, um, and the code up here, and the HTML down here, but it, it's similar. Uh, logout, um, basically what logout will do is just post to the logout API and again redirect you to back to the root of the application. And then the weather forecast, I just rewrote the React version of it in Svelte. So this is how you um, access a API and it has this await option here which will wait um, for the results to come back while it's waiting. It'll show the loading tag, and when it's done, it'll um, assign the result of that method's data to this weather data variable, which it's able to loop through, and this is an each routine that loops through it and puts the table together using the data. So this is just an equivalent to what was done in the React project template. Now, the last thing I want to show you here is this authorized view. This is kind of what does some of the magic. Um, it is a component that allows you to put any other components inside of it that will only be shown if you're authenticated. So I'm going to go down to the HTML itself. And the way it does is, is it uses what are called slots. So a slot is basically anything that you had put inside the authorize view tag is represented by the slot. And you can actually pass variables into that slot um, so that they can access them. And I do that on purpose because I want to be able to pass to the user um, the email of who's logged in. So you can do that as well. Now, if I go here, um, and what is, so what is this doing? What it does is immediately cause is authenticating, is authenticated. And while that's loading, it'll put a um, message up. But when it's, it's done, it will show the slot content, passing this identity email through to it. And all this does is uh, call the ping off. So it calls ping off. And if it's authenticated, it'll get a 200 error response, which means success. And if not, it will, um, and which if it does, it'll redirect to the login page, uh, or just show the login page here. Um, but if it doesn't, if it does work, it will um, get that user's email from the responses JSON. 
and then return that. So you can wrap any of your pages in this and it'll require that those pages uh, have a logged in user. And it does call ping auth every time to check, but that's okay because you might need your, if the page has been up there for a while and the cookie expires, you wanna make sure it's checked the next time you click the page. So it'll do that check to make sure the cookie is still good. Now, um, uh, let me just conclude by saying this isn't a comprehensive tutorial on Svelte, nor is it really a comprehensive tutorial on ASP.NET Core. Uh, but I hope that this example project will show you how the two can work really nicely together. And maybe that this authorization implementation might help you uh, in your projects get started with how you could implement a Svelte program with a identity, ASP.NET identity backend. I think these two tools work really well together and I'm excited to see how Svelte progresses in market share um, because it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, I'd like your opinions. If any of you, I'm more of a Blazor developer myself, but if any of you are React, Angular people and have done more comparisons with Svelte, I'd love to hear about it in the comments and uh, see what you think as re regards um, where things are going in this area. Hope this was helpful and uh, thank you for watching. And if you would, please like and subscribe so I can keep making these videos.